the formidable robot. So a few years ago, I used to work at a tech shop that was very well known in the area where it was located. It went by the name, Bits and Bytes. It was known for its high-quality pre-built systems, friendly staff, discounts on premium items, etc. My role primarily involved assembling pre-built PCs. So one day, after I was done testing one of the pre-builts, one of my co-workers mentioned about something that had to do with the storage vault beneath the store. Many of the employees had reports of strange noises, paranormal activities, and more of those creepy stuff happening in there. I normally scoff at those kinds of stories, even at times cracking some jokes about them. However, what my co-worker said next caught my attention. He informed me that he went there one time and saw multiple old PCs dating back to the early 90s, like some compact laptops, gateway PCs, and more. They even had copies of old games like Motocross Madness 1 and 2, Red Faction, Half-Life, Unreal Tournament, and many others. I decided to check out the vault later. It was nearing closing time, around 6.30 p.m., when my manager tasked me with retrieving copies of Windows 8.1 from the vault. He also mentioned I could take some of the old tech and games home for free, knowing my passion for vintage technology. Eagerly, I accepted and went into the supposedly haunted vault. I did what he ordered me to do while bringing some computers, laptops, games, and even consoles with me, something that my friend didn't mention. To my surprise, I encountered nothing paranormal, no eerie noises or ghosts. It seemed the rumors of hauntings were nothing but fabrications or exaggerations. Back at home, I tested the consoles, laptops and games I'd acquired. Despite their heavy usage, they all functioned, albeit with some minor issues. Exploring the laptops, I discovered personal documents and photos, likely left behind by their previous owners. It was clear these devices had seen plenty of use before finding their way into the vault. Next came the computers, with the first two appearing very normal, but with some games built in like Flat Out 2, GTA San Andreas, and more goaded classics. However, the last one was, just, very odd, to say the least. Upon starting it up, it booted to a clean install of Windows XP Home Edition. And when I say, a clean install, I really do mean a clean install, with the Bliss background, the default chess user icon, and the recycle bin being the only things present on the desktop. While I was browsing the contents of the hard drive, the disk drive started to make a very loud reading sound, which is common for disk drives to make those kinds of sounds. And all of a sudden, an auto-run application ran with a nondescript title that read, Windows Mercury, with three buttons at the bottom of the title. Install Windows Mercury. Check System Requirements. Exit. The odd thing about the application was that the background was completely transparent. I have rarely seen a program with a transparent background, let alone an auto-run program. I have also never heard in my life of a version of Windows with that code name. I closed the program, ejected the disk tray, and inspected the disk. The disk appeared to be a burn CD with the code name of the OS written over it in marker. I turned the thing around to see the whole disk scratched, which might explain why the disk drive made that loud noise. I put the CD inside the drive and ran the auto-run program again, but this time, its background changed to black. I was having suspicions about the whole thing, but I brushed it off as some kind of glitch with the program. Then I clicked on Install Windows Mercury, and this is where things got pretty creepy and disturbing. During the installation process, unnerving sounds started to play through the speakers, from someone playing something on the piano with off-key piano notes to someone singing in a hallway, to voices speaking in a threatening manner, like Why are you doing this? Seriously? Why are you doing this to yourself? And many others that I forgot. All of those sounds were badly recorded and compressed. Despite their poor quality, these sounds managed to send chills down my spine. The UI was very lackluster, basically a black background with the same text and font from the auto run and a progress bar. The background would change at times from black to dark red, even at times changing from static colors to images of distorted faces and an entity. 
I vividly remember in one of the images having a humanoid entity with long arms and legs and a distorted face staring at the photographer. That one scared me to my core so much that it made me turn off the monitor and speakers for a while. Then I just realized that the photo was possibly taken from a videotape, raising even more questions and paranoia. After about 40 minutes, the PC restarted to the desktop. Turning on the monitor and the speakers back on, I was greeted with a pitch black background, along with the Windows 2000 taskbar and icons, with a Windows Mercury text at the bottom right of the screen. This indicates that this version of Windows was built on the Windows 2000 NT kernel. While browsing the contents of the OS, I found several new files in the My Pictures and My Music folders. The Pictures folder showed the images from the setup, with the exception of one. Titled, 2020902060.png. When I opened the file, it showed a photo of a bedroom, with the same PC I was testing this thing on, but with the same entity, a light pointed at it, close to the person who took the photo with their hand stretched to grab the poor victim. It sent even more chills down my spine. I even looked around the room, being even more scared, which made me quickly close the image and delete the rest of it. I didn't check the music folder, but I think it has the same sound files from the setup. Then I discovered two games in the program files folder. Revolver and Stop the Monster. I tried Revolver first. The objective was to kill some cowboys, and your primary weapon is, well, a revolver. I played the game for a bit, and it seemed to be your average FPS game that some teens made back in the 2000s, or so I thought. When I completed the first level, it went to a black screen before cutting to a video of someone exploring a cabin with a flashlight, similar to the one in the image. It didn't get too far, as the person heard a noise coming from the bedroom, seeing the entity and the video abruptly ending just at the time as the poor guy met his demise. Then the game exited to the desktop. I was left speechless. What in the world did I just witness? Then I tried stop the monster. Oh dear god, was that a mistake? When I opened it up, it directed me to a level that was a one-to-one -one copy of the cabin. The objective was to hunt down a monster similar to the pictures and the tape. Your primary weapon is a double-barreled shotgun. The game was laggy, likely due to the low-end GPU and CPU. I explored around the cabin, nothing unusual happened until I eventually found the entity. Then a cutscene played of the thing carrying around a corpse with a camera in its hand. After a while, the monster noticed me and proceeded to make an ear-piercing screech, sending shivers down my spine. I quickly fired my shotgun at the thing, but that didn't stop him. It made him even more aggressive, intensifying its screams. I started to sprint around the cabin until I came to a dead end. Then the entity cornered me, replicating the gruesome demise in the recording. Then the game minimized and proceeded to open multiple Internet Explorer windows with websites that featured pictures of decomposed bodies, even worse distorted faces, accompanied by a distorted screaming sound. It was so loud, it almost destroyed my eardrums. In the chaos, the PC's fans kicked into overdrive, accompanied by a pop sound and the smell of burning electronics as one of the RAM sticks failed. I quickly unplugged the power cable and flung open the window, allowing the acrid scent to dissipate. I destroyed the CD and reformatted the hard drive, putting an end to all of that bullshit. However, the images, the unsettling videotape and the disturbing games lingered in my mind for a while. Fortunately, I sought the help I needed to cope with the trauma, and eventually I was able to move on 